Hey, how you doing? Duff here. Time for another Duff 3D video. Um, I wanted to just quickly update everybody on uh, my Ender 2. The last video that I made about the Ender, I mentioned the horrible time I was having getting stuff off of the uh, build plate with that build tack kind of surface that's included with the printer. Um, I tried a couple things that I mentioned, like, like adjusting the level, trying to get it down more so the first layer wasn't pressed so tightly into the build tack, um, and I still had a hell of a time getting parts off, so um, I said screw it, and I put on my uh, my quarter inch thick Boro Oscillate glass 6x6, 6x6 size, or 6x6 piece of Boro Oscillate glass, I have to edit that out, um, and uh, that's what I've been using. So now when I first put it on, uh, there was an issue, because that glass is so thick, I could not get it uh, to level correctly because it was the, the build surface was sitting too high that the end stop would not engage. So, so what I had to do in order to fix that was uh, this. Normally, this is the uh, the bracket for the um, the z-axis end stop. Normally, there's three bolts here. I had to remove this bottom one because that, that has a stationary hole. These top two are T-nuts that slide in this rail. So I, I took out the bottom one and I slid it up just a little bit and then through trial and error I tightened it up. I got it to a point where I was able to uh, comfortably level the bed um, with, with the, the uh, Z-stop slightly higher. So yeah, once I raised the Z-stop level it took um, a lot of trial and error till I got the bed leveled. Um, you know, generally speaking, I find leveling the ender to be a pain because of the, uh, the location of the, of the leveling knobs, especially the one on the left-hand side of the bed. Um, and the fact that it's three points versus four points, it, it took a lot of trial and error. But as you saw on the video, uh, or on the little clip that I started the, this video with, um, my end result has been good. That, that part that you saw, it popped right off. And that's the experience that I'm used to with the CR-10. You know, you get good adhesion while you're printing, but um, after the print, it's so easy to remove the remove the part. And uh, the bottom, it, you know, the surface that's on the glass is super smooth. It's like glass. Well, it's kind of odd that the plastic's like glass, but yeah, it is. It really is. And um, it worked just like I hoped. And since then, I've probably done, I don't know, half a dozen prints. And it's, it's worked really, really well. I haven't had an issue with getting it off because I, I was worried that I would not be able to get this working properly, so I actually went out and bought um, a, a small six inch section of, of lock build as well because I use that on my finder and it works uh, well there. But knock on wood, I haven't used it yet. The, the glasses work just fine. The glasses work just fine on the Ender, so hoping that's still the case. So yeah, if you're, if you, I know I've seen a lot of people in the Ender 2 group complain about the same thing, about it being a pain in the ass to get stuff off. And, uh, and I have seen other people that have used glass. I don't think I've seen anybody else that's used the quarter inch thick boro oscillate glass. So, um, you know, the downside is it's expensive. The downside is if you get it as thick as I did, um, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to futz with your Z-stop a little bit. But, um, you know, boro oscillate glass is like super heat resistant, super flat, so it, in the long run, to me, I think it'll at least be worth it. It cost me, I think, shipped it was twenty five or twenty six dollars. I think I mentioned that in the last video as well. So, um, hoping it makes my printing experience on the Ender uh, even better. And I, you might remember also the last video. This I was trying to get off a green version of this off of the platform, and this is this is the uh, part that you just saw pop off at the beginning of the video, and. Um, Obviously, it was very easy to remove the supports. I did change my support settings in Cura to help that, but uh, having it uh, print on glass versus the build tack made it easier as well, for sure. So yeah, this is this is my success story right here. So that's it. I um, just want to give you an update, and um, uh, there's there's actually should be possibly another printer arriving, 3D printer arriving, to. Uh, join my army of printers shortly. So um, that could be an interesting review. That will probably consume the last of my shelf space. So um, if I want to expand my 3D printing collection beyond that, I'm gonna probably have to start rotating things off the big counter and underneath. So 
guess that's a good problem to have, so we'll see. So that's all for now. Um, if you have any questions, please post them before uh, below. Questions, comments, uh, suggestions, criticism, um, whatever. It's uh, it's all it's all good to me, and I appreciate anyone that takes the time to look at my videos. Anyway, so uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're a first-time visitor, please hit that subscribe button. And that's uh, that's it for now. Till next time, duck me now.